Hey guys, it's Ross, and today I want to talk to you guys about a fig tasting video that I did in Lancaster this past weekend. Um, I've seen some serious fig growers in the last couple weekends. I went up to Connecticut and saw Mario and saw his operation. You know, I went to uh, Lancaster this past weekend and saw Big Bill. I mean, both very impressive guys with impressive setups, really know what they're doing, know what they're talking about. Um, you know, they've been growing figs longer than I have. Uh, Big Bill, by the way, before I get into this fig tasting with you guys, he has his own little website here. Well, it's it's on Facebook. He doesn't have a website, but you can call him or send him a message through here, and you can order figs, really reasonable price. Trees, that is. You can also get cuttings from him in November. Very reasonable prices. Um... You can see down here he's sold some pawpaws. I got to taste one. Actually, I got to taste a couple. They're really, really good. They taste like bananas. Um, you know, he also sells a lot of different weird things like lingonberries, and he sells persimmons and pawpaws and all kinds of interesting fruits that you normally don't really get a chance to to hear much about. I mean, I know I talk, I talk about them. I try to talk a lot about them. But Bill really is growing a lot of them, and um, he also has a crazy fig operation and containers. He's got 94 fig trees in the ground. So I would advise, if you guys are looking for plants, you know, I'm not a nursery. I'm going to sell you guys some cuttings and whatnot, but Bill has a nursery. So, you know, he's a really great person and a really good person to deal with, too. So go over to his Facebook page, and um, I would definitely check it out. For this video though, and all the video I captured this weekend, um, I couldn't, the audio just didn't work out. I mean, I don't know if you guys can hear this, so I can turn on the audio, but it just didn't come out well. It sounds like I'm underwater. I've since upgraded my audio, and it's working out really, really well. I'm excited for the new setup. I know a lot of you guys on iPads couldn't hear me all that well. So I think I've learned that uh, if I'm going to record something, I need to see the video first and then go ahead through with the recording. For whatever reason, this one just didn't work out. Um, but I have the video. I have all 15 to 20 varieties that we're going to go over here and talk about them. And at least if I can't, you can't hear the video, then um, you know at least you can hear my voice and I can kind of do a voiceover of what it is that we tasted and this is pretty interesting I think because there's so many varieties in one place you know we have a Celeste unknown that Bill had in the front of his house that some uh, some guy got for him just an unknown fig we don't know what it is we also have uh, Del Sen Waming Ron here from Montserrat Ponds this is a fig that I picked from my own tree this is Socorro Black Rabin de Calci Rabin de Calci from Baud in France. Here's Fico Rubato. That really isn't all that ripe. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. Something, a squirrel or a groundhog in my yard bit into this fig when it was basically hard. I, I don't know why it did this, but it did. And um, <clears throat> the fig never really ripened properly. Then we got Saphiro, which has been my favorite honey fig. It is probably my, it is my favorite honey fig. We have Little Ruby de la Plata from Ponds, the first one I've had off that. We got Blanche de Deux Saisons, which is looking extremely dark. That's like almost purple. In person, it was almost purple. We got Black Madeira right next to an Italian 258. And then here's some of Bill's figs. Marseille Black VS, Toronto Unknown, LSU Scott's Black, Unknown Mueller's, which uh, had SWD in it, so we can't really put an opinion on it, but it's we both agree it looks a lot like Brunswick, and we pretty much have it here just for visual purposes. We didn't need it. But LSU Scott's black up there. Uh, we've also got uh, Ron de Bordeaux, and the two of these together, you got one that's super ripe, one that's a little underripe, and quite a difference between those two figs. Sunfire Unknown. So that's a big list, and here's actually Big Bill right there. He's a really super guy. Seriously, I recommend you guys look him up on Facebook. 
Um, if you didn't see the video that I'm, I posted yesterday, we posted a video on the 94 fig trees he has in the ground and the, the setup that he has and all the um, really finer details of making it work. Um, it's everything pretty much that I've been preaching on my channel, but he's got it there laid out as proof. He's about a year ahead of me with my some of my in-ground trees. And he's actually colder than where I'm at. So, but let's fast forward here. So I think the first fig we picked was Blanche de Du Cezans. And uh, Blanche de Du Cezans, actually, I think we went over here to LSU Scott's Black. And the reason I chose LSU Scott's Black is because it looks a lot like. Uh, Coldadama Grease VS and Coldadama Grease VS. It's a fig that Herman in New Jersey has, and he thought it was Coldadama Grease for years. Some people got a hold of it and started growing it and realized it's not Coldadama Grease. Um, so we don't really know what it is, and we just call it Coldadama Grease VS, which is his initials. I actually think it's LSU Scott's Black, and I remember looking at this fig very distinctly here and thinking, wow, that looks just like uh, Coldadam Grease VS. So I don't know. I have to have them side by side. I have both trees, so we'll find out eventually. Uh, pretty good fig, I have to say, LSU Scott's Black. That is Blanche de Du Cezanne. And Blanche de Du Cezanne. Is it like a typical Adriatic type, like Green Aishia, JH Adriatic, Taglia Green? You know, they're very similar to each other. Strawberry Verte. This one, for whatever reason, is really dark on the inside. Uh, this is the first fig I've had like this. And then it also was super jammy. Like the texture was out of this world. It blew us away. This was a real standout out of the bunch. Um, it was also, the flavor wasn't um, amazing, but the texture was really something. So I'm looking forward to more figs off of this one. Bill also agreed. He couldn't believe, he couldn't, he didn't have any words. I mean, he's saying it right now. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what to think. He, uh, he was a little blown away. Look at him, he's shaking his head. Yes. <laughs> so we both agreed that was a really good one. Let's see, what was next? We went to the RDB, and Bill really loves this fig. This was his decision to go to this this direction next. You know, it's really is a top tier fig. I, I I think it's one of his favorite figs for our climate. Out of all the varieties he grows, I mean, he's he said in this video, by the way, when I when we first started the video, he's got about 200 varieties, and I think he's tried in his life about 200 varieties. So um, he really knows his stuff. And to say that this fig, it really is just a solid, solid fig. And I completely agree. It's easily in my top 10 right now. So this is Ron de Bardot. And really is a huge difference, guys, from one day to the next ripening your figs. And this is a perfect, perfect example. Um, I've had them even better than this, you know, and the tr my tree, I just put it in the ground. I really need to make more copies of it. Um, I think I'll do that next year is I'm going to air layer off a big portion of that tree to make multiple copies of this. I think it's wise, at least in my climate, to have at least, to have about five of these trees. I mean, I could see myself having about five Violette de Bordeaux types as well, which I kind of already do. So, but let's keep going. This fig has a real nice berry flavor to it. And uh, he, you know, Bill obviously really enjoyed it here. Let's see. I think we went from, we went from Ron de Bordeaux to a Hardy Chicago type, which is Marseille Black VS. Marseille Black VS, kind of similar berry, but Marseille Black is more of like a fruitier berry, where Ron de Bordeaux has a berry that's more complex, maybe more intense. 
um, more like a raspberry, whereas Marseille Black is like fruit punch. So, you know, typical Hardy Chicago, nothing really to see there too much. But then we went to Sunfire Unknown, which is definitely also a Hardy Chicago type as well. And, you know, nothing too special out of either of them. You know, they were a little under right to me and Bill's liking, I would say. Um, you know, what did we choose next here? Looks like we chose Socorro Black, and Socorro Black's quite dark, quite a dark red interior to it. Um, trying to get a decent f photo for you guys to see here, but Socorro Black is like one of them figs that r ripens a little bit later, but it's actually ripening its full crop here in Pennsylvania, which is nice to see. Look how dark red that is. It's also filled with honey. The berry flavor was not as great as I'm hoping it to be. I think in further years down the line, it should get better. But it's very, very sweet. Um, overall, it's a nice fig for late for late in the season. And I, I really like it for that. You know, late in the season, it's tough to find good figs. And Italian 258, this guy here, and Borges So Grease, I think, are really nice choices for that. Um, really was not too impressed by the by that particular fig, and I don't think Bill was either, if I recall correctly. Here we can see Italian 258 next to uh, Black Madeira. For whatever reason, some Black Madeiras just don't ripen perfectly. I mean, they're just weird anomalies. Um, but Italian 258, Bill was just saying how much he loves that fig. And I was showing him here, you can see a little close-up, that Italian 258 has like a different texture altogether than most figs. Because you can see in the whiteness here, see these little white, I think they're called vesicles. These are like the flower of the fig. The whole thing is a flower, but these are like the... I think they're called vesicles, but see these little white things here that are then, you know, on the exterior of them is, excuse me, is jam. These are very long, thick vesicles, and I think that gives you a different mouthfeel. There's also many of them, and uh, I think this is a really interesting point about the texture of figs. It really makes a different texture where. If I can kind of show you guys, hey, let's look, here's Zafiro. Zafiro, you can't really make out the vesicles, you know what I mean? Um, they're much smaller. It's much more conjoined, one unit. Um, it's more jammy that way, I find. Um, you know, I think those those bigger vesicles create more of a meatier texture, more of a it's like more fig than you think is there. So, but Italian 258, obviously, it's very very good, and even the fig I I picked, it wasn't perfect, but it was still really good. It's a Firo, and I've done a video on this guy's recently. It was a really tasty honey fig best part about it is that it seems like it ripens in a really short window. Um, all the figs are ripening consecutively back to back in a short window there, but then also it doesn't take very long from swelling to ripe. It's about five days and the fig is done, ready to be eaten. Um, it's also really sweet, has citrusy notes. The exterior is black, which is really a nice contrast it also has a different skin quality to it than most honey figs, which I find to be a big bonus. And the skin to me tastes nutty, almost like coconut. So pretty cool. Really great fig. And then after we ate Italian 258, yeah, we ate Black Madeira to compare them. And they really do have a very similar flavor. Um, very, very similar. And I think for myself personally, Italian 258 is a better choice here in this climate. I think I think Black Madeira would be a better choice in a warmer climate, like Zone 9 or above, or a warm Zone 8, because Black Madeira has a longer ripening window from the first fig to the last fig. So 
it doesn't really do all that 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 well here because you still end up with extra figs still on the tree by the time frost comes here. Even with a head start, gave that tree a huge head start. Whereas Italian 258 ripens its entire crop in a month and a half, and it's done. It's now October 10th, but on October 15th it will be done, and that's 15 days before our first frost. But let's keep going here. We did Rubato next. This is a really tasty variety that has a lot of potential. I know Bill really loves it. Few people grow this fig just yet. Um, it's an Italian variety, but my fig, like I said in, in the beginning of this video, it wasn't ripe. Um, it wasn't ripe at all. The skin never even turned from green, but we ate it anyway just to see what the deal was. Bill has it, and he loves it. It's one of his favorite figs for taste quality. Um, what else do we have here? This was the Celeste Unknown that he has in the front. He doesn't know what it is. I don't know what it is. We both agreed it was horrible. <laughs> we, were a bit, we were laughing about it. We had to take a sip of water afterwards. Not good. Um, let's see. What did we eat here next? We kind of went in a really nice order. We went to Zafiro next. We talked about Zafiro. Bill was overwhelmed, I think, by the sweetness. There's moments in here that I could probably play it that the audio would be okay. It's one you gotta grab some more for. Yeah. yeah, but then the audio just goes back to crap. Let's fast forward. This is uh, Robin DeCalci. It was up next. You can see it there. Uh, Robin DeCalci uh, is quite a good fig in my mind. It needs a little bit of time to mature. For me, it's an 8 out of 10 so far but I think it could have potential um, you know it's from France and uh, it seems to be a late ripener but I'm excited to have it go back to let's see what's next we went to De La Plata and this is the first fig off of this I've ever eaten De La Plata is a Pons fig from Mallorca, Spain, and it seems to be a bit of a splitter, so I think I'm going to get rid of it, actually. Let me see. It is, is, is it a splitter? I think it is. Yeah, so it's, it's splitting for me. That was the that's Actually, that's the first fig I've gotten off of that tree. But in his book, Pons describes it as a splitter, so if he says it's a splitter in Spain, which is very dry, you bet it's going to be a splitter here. But nonetheless, pretty good. It was an 8 out of 10. It was a fruity fig, like fruit punch, fruity berry. Um, and we also got, let's see, we got Del Sen Wamming Ron. This was the biggest fig of the ones we, we picked. Um, normally, they are quite big. And Bill was in love with this fig because it's like a, a green Italian 258. I, I agree with <clears throat> I agree with that because um, it really is. It has the same vesicles. I'm going to show you guys that in a second. It has a similar flavor, sharp berry flavor to it with a lot of honey. I have trouble, though, getting these guys to ripen because it seems to take a long time from swelling to perfectly ripe. It's a long time before they're perfect. Um, you know, They seem to be rain resistant, though, and they seem to be OK in terms of splitting but I haven't been able to get one that was good. And if I can show everybody, look, so there's the bigger vesicles that I was talking about in Italian 258. It has a similar mouthfeel, similar texture. That's pretty damn similar to Italian 258, man. So that's kind of the video, guys. Um, we, ate, we had a feast, man. I mean, really, really impressive figs. Um, and you can go back, guys, like I said at the beginning of this video, seriously, go check out Bill's, uh, Bill's nursery and get some trees from him. They're really, really affordable. And you can buy them right from him. You don't have to go through eBay or through FigBid and bid on them. You can get them for a flat price. And, um, yeah, it's off the beaten path nursery. I'll put a description. I'll put this link in the description, guys, so you can get here right away. 
But anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of variety, so but I, even though I couldn't get the audio, I'm happy I was able to share it with you guys. All right, guys, take care.